Greeting citizens. Hey you, hey you beautiful creepy human being you. Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's true crime video. I'm so happy we could meet like this. I'm so happy that somehow in all of this that we're forced to deal with on the day today, today you and I were able to find each other on this crazy little planet that we call home. My name is Brittany or Bratterstein, whichever you prefer, and today we're going to be discussing the attempted murder of Christy Mack at the hands of her then boyfriend, War Machine, or as I like to call him, simply John. But before we get started, if you have not yet had the pleasure, please make sure to join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing that bell. I put out a new video every single week and I would love to hang out with you. Yes, you specifically you, but I can only do that if you join the Brat Pack and become one of us. One of us, one of us, one of us. All right, now that I'm done begging you to join my cult, we can go ahead and get into today's video. Now, today's video is one of my condensed crime cases. Condensed crime cases are for those of you who like short form content. Those of you who wanna get in, get out, and get on your way, or for people who already watch me every week on Monday and just want like a little bit more of me throughout the week. So if either of those things are you, cool, you're gonna enjoy this video. If you're kind of like, I don't like short form and you really like my deep dives, my multi-parters, my long videos, don't worry, Monday is still reserved for you, baby. So today I'm gonna to tell you the story of the attempted murder of Christy Mack. And at the end of this video, I want you to answer the question of the day. I'm gonna give it to you now so you can have it knocking around in your brain while we go through all the details, but obviously I want you to wait to answer it till you have an informed response, right? Right. So the question of the day is this. Do you believe that the sentence that was given to War Machine slash John Copenhaver was sufficient and justice? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below after we go through all the details of this case. Now, with all of that said, come gather around and let me tell you the story of the attempted murder of Christy Mack at the hands of War Machine. Now, I want to start by telling you about who War Machine was, or is rather, because he is still alive. John Paul Copenhaver, who legally changed his name to War Machine in 2008, was a self-proclaimed alpha male who did, quote, alpha male shit, like pouring Slurpees on the ground of establishments when they asked him if he would take his hood off. You know, that kind of alpha male shit. He was a mixed martial artist who appeared on a TV show called The Ultimate Fighter, which I never watched. I wasn't really their demographic. You know, like in a demographic study, the show proved to be most popular amongst males 11 to 24. So I guess they just missed me. So from what I read, he wasn't really liked. Like he wasn't a popular guy in the beginning of the season that he was on, like on the show, his season. But from what I can see by the end, he did end up being a fan favorite. So once he went on to do UFC, the UFC, is it the UFC or just UFC? I've never, like I've watched it because my mom's super into it, but it's not something that I like. I'm not the patron of said sport. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. Rocky IV is one of my favorite movies of all time, which is boxing and that's kind of the same. I feel like some people are gonna have thoughts about this, but he was a household name by the time he went on to be, the, to be in the slash just UFC. But the problem was he didn't seem to be able to keep like all of his violence just in the ring. He was the type of guy who really like brought his work home with him, to say the least. He was arrested a couple of times, once for choking a man unconscious in a parking lot. And in another instance, he knocked a bouncer out, like at a club, he knocked him unconscious. And apparently according to him, it started as a fight that just went from like talking shit to this two deciding to fight and it got physical. But he knocked this guy out with one punch. But each time he got into legal trouble, he was just given a slap on the wrist, the wrist, the wrist, and was therefore able to continue working as an MMA fighter until he got in trouble again. And this time he got into another altercation, which I believe this was actually with another bouncer. And in this instance, he just attacked him. He ended up like punching him in the mouth over and over and over and actually ended up loosening a couple of this guy's teeth, which is like my literal hell and worst nightmare. Like absolutely nothing with the teeth, nothing with the teeth. Now, it was this altercation that actually got him some time behind bars. He was like put in jail and he was in jail for two years before he was released back into the world in October of 2012. And it was just a year after that, that he met a lady. It was in 2013 that a 32 year old John Copenhaver slash War Machine, I guess he was War Machine by that time, whatever. It was in 2013 that he who was 32 started dating a 22 year old girl named Christine McIndy who went professionally as Christy Mack, like that was her stage name because she was a very successful sex film actor. Christy had actually changed her life completely fairly recently, like not too far before meeting War Machine. She before that had been married to her high school 
boyfriend. They got married at 18 or she was 18. I don't know how he was. And she had a quiet, easy stay at home life. But then one day somebody approached her to ask her if she'd like to post new because she was like a very like hot girl. And it was at that point that everything in her life changed. But anyways, so the two met during a hustler photo shoot in 2013. And this was actually a photo shoot for John. Like he was the person who they were bringing on in the first place. Does that make sense? Cool. So he was the star, so to speak. And he said that he would only do it if they agreed to pair him up with Christy Mack, because there was going to be like a girl in the picture with him. And that's who he wanted. And he wouldn't do it unless it was her, even though at this point they hadn't even met yet. He was still like, I know I never met her before, but if you do not like take my photo with her, I'm just not going to do it. So she went on, she agreed and they really hit it off. And they started dating just a couple of weeks later. I guess what happened is she got super sick with pneumonia and he hit her up wanting to hang out. And she was super skeptical. She didn't want to be in a relationship. She didn't want to give him the wrong impression. She even told him like, listen, do you want to hang out or do you want to hang out? Cause I'm not going to be banging you. And he was like, listen, I still want to spend time with you. Even if you don't want to be like physical with me. And she decided, okay, cool. And they did, they got together, they hung out, they ate pizza, they watched movies and he like helped nurse her back to health. And she said that she just felt very, very taken care of. She said of this quote, it was an amazing connection. I fell in love really quick. The two would go to the movies together, go to the park, just drive around, do things that were just the two of them because Christy had pretty bad social anxiety and didn't like crowds. And he seemed to be super respectful of her and her boundaries, but not really her choices. The thing was, even though John knew what she did for a living, because like, that's how he got to meet her in the first place, not with what she did for a living, but you know what I mean? He knew who she was. He knew what she did. He wasn't super into it. He wasn't a fan of the work that she did. So she actually went on to stop doing films for a while. She just did photos and appearances and it definitely helped some, but it also wasn't enough. It was good enough that they were able to keep their relationship going. They were, you know, dating one another. They even lived together on two separate occasions in her Las Vegas home. Things between the two of them seemed to be going well and they seemed super in love. Like to the outside, you would think that they were just obsessed with each other. All the photos of them at that time were just happy and smiling and content and cuddling. And Christy always had a smile on her face, but later new photos would start to circulate all over the internet of Christy Mack's battered and bloodied face after she escaped his attempted murder. It turns out War Machine was pretty violent through the entirety of their relationship. It started small. He always had a temper. That was something that she found right away. But in the beginning, he would always remove himself from the situation so that it wouldn't escalate. But eventually he stopped removing himself and would start to get physically violent with her. It would start with him slapping her in the face, but that was it. That's the way she would say it. Oh, he'd slap me in the face, but that was it. And then it went on to him choking her in, but that was it. Her words, not mine. The fights and the violence got worse and worse. And in one occasion that really stuck with me, Christy talked about a time where he started to attack her while they were together in a car and she was terrified. She was so scared that she was like, I have to, I have to get out of here. I have to remove myself from this situation for my own self-preservation. So she ended up like slipping out of a seatbelt that she was wearing and she waited for them to come to a red light. And when they came to the red light, she tried to, she tried to book it. She tried to run, but he was too fast and he actually grabbed her by her hair. He ripped her back into the car. He slammed her face into the dashboard, chipping her tooth. He went on to hit her. He went on to bite her in the chin. And then he took off down a side street into like the desert. And he told her like, I have to kill you now because people saw you trying to escape. He told her he was going to take her to the desert and he was going to kill her and leave her there. And she believed him. But fortunately in this instance, he calmed down and he just took her home. And it went on like this. It got to the point that War Machine, no, John was continuously abusing Christy all of the time. He would beat her. He would choke her to the point of unconsciousness. He would rape her and she would just put on a brave face and hide it from everybody and act like everything was perfectly fine and that they were perfectly happy. I just can't imagine what that would be like to have to hide something so horrible from everyone. She hid it from her friends. She hid it from her mom, especially because her mom who lived with her already hated John and John hated her too, actually. And Christy didn't want to tell her mom because she didn't want her mom to worry. And she really didn't want her mom to call the cops. And this was like a legit worry of hers and also a worry of John's. Like when John and Christy would get in their fights, when he'd start attacking her, he would take her phone because he was worried she would call her mom. And he knew that her mom would call the cops because she already disliked him. And because she had already like expressed things that made her uncomfortable about their relationship and had threatened to call the cops. So he knew that she would do it. 
And it's really wild to think that she didn't know, to be honest, with how violent he was. But I guess whenever she'd get hurt, if there was like a physical mark, she would just hide it. She'd lie about it. She'd say she fell down the stairs or that one of her dogs, because she had big dogs, like jumped up and hit her in the face or scratched her in the face to explain the marks that she'd have. Christy said part of the reason she wouldn't tell anybody and part of the reason that she hid what happened is she didn't want to believe that the relationship really was as bad as it was. And she wanted to believe that he loved her because he would do these incredibly violent things to her. But then immediately after he would be the best to her that he had ever been. Their relationship would be the best it had ever been. He'd stay home from work just to be with her and he'd shower her with love and affection. He'd go to the store and get all her snacks that she wanted and he'd stay in with her because she loved being a homebody. They'd order in delivery and coffee and he would love her more than he had ever loved her. It's honestly super sad because she was asked at trial like how she would describe their relationship and she said that she would describe it as very passionate but very violent and at times very loving. She said she loved him so much and would have done absolutely anything for him. She even had a tattoo on her body that said property of war machine. She said she was very embarrassed that this had happened to her. Very embarrassed that she'd let herself get into this type of relationship because she never thought that could be her. She saw herself as a strong woman and she said she now knows she had no reason to be embarrassed, but at the time she really was. And on top of that embarrassment, she had fear. She was terrified to tell anyone for fear of what he'd do to her, but also fear of what he'd do to people she loved or what he'd have people he knew do. He told her he had friends in the Navy SEALs and friends in Hell's Angels. And if she was ever to tell, he'd send them after her and after the people she loved. So that's a lot to deal with. That's a lot to try to compartmentalize. It's um, a lot of mind games that I can't imagine going through. I don't know how one deals with that. I can understand how it can be very confusing and very painful. And it just sounds like hell. But now we're going to move on to the night that all of this has been leading up to the night that War Machine tried to kill Christy Mack. After two years of dating in May of 2014, Christy decided she had had enough and she wanted out of the relationship and she actually did get off. She completely cut John off, ended the relationship, but John had actually kept a key to her Las Vegas um, home so that he could use it if he needed it. Now it's not known if he had been, at least to me, if he had been coming and going in her apartment without her knowing it or with her knowing it prior to this night, but three months after the breakup happened in August of 2014. War Machine showed up at her home in the middle of the night to find her in bed sleeping with her new boyfriend at the time. And this was a guy named Corey. So Christy and Corey sit up shocked awake by the light being turned on and they see John standing there with a face of shock and rage. He looks right at Corey. He mouths the words, what the f and then he beelines right towards him and just starts beating the shit out of this guy. And I said, and I said, beeline but what i meant would have been like why do they call it beeline when it's like bo burnham never mind anyways so he for 10 minutes is beating shit out of sky Corey. right he's hitting him he's choking him because of the, and this is an mma fighter okay this isn't like a normal guy kicking your ass this is an mma fighter attacking you this guy left this attack with a bite mark on his face a bite mark on his arm a broken nose and a dislocated shoulder and when this is happening he's attacking Corey. christy jumps out of bed and she runs and she has two dogs she has two pit bulls who you can't tell this story and learn these names and not include it. So she had two pit bulls named Cleopatra and Pitrick Swayze because they were pit bulls. And she takes them and she puts them outside because John had been known to abuse her dogs. And that is a dog mom right there to put them outside before even getting help for yourself. But that was the very next thing she did. She grabbed her cell phone. She grabbed her cell phone and she ran and locked herself in the bathroom. So while she's in the bathroom, John ends up putting Corey into a chokehold and he squeezes his neck to the point of unconsciousness. He says that he starts seeing stars and that he believes he's going to die. And all the while, John's just threatening him. And he says at that point, he realized like he didn't have the strength to keep fighting John back. So with what he had left, he was just like, what do you want from me? He says that John continued to keep threatening him, telling him like, you don't know who I know. You don't know what I could have happened to you. How do I know if I let you go, you're not going to snitch. Corey then told him that 
he wasn't a snitch and at this point John had two options. He either had to kill Corey or he had to let him go. So John kind of sat on that for a minute and after some contemplation and after making Corey promise that he wouldn't go to the police, he did let him go. Corey got up, he went upstairs, he collected his things and he walked out that front door leaving Christy alone with War Machine. Now Corey did not call the police. He said, like he rationalized this by thinking that this was a scuffle between two dudes, that all of the anger that War Machine had was directed at him, you know, the other man. And now he was gonna be alone and try to reconcile things with the girl that, you know, he loved, whatever. He said in his mind, the idea of hitting a woman was so far beyond what he would do that he did not think that Christy was in any danger. He also said that when he left, he didn't see anything that would make him think that there was going to be continued violence in that home. He really believed that now that him and John had kind of fought it out, that would be it and Christy would be safe. But he was very, very wrong. For two hours, John attacked Christy. He beat the shit out of her. He held a kitchen knife, like a dull kitchen knife up to her and like up to her ear. She said at one point she woke up in the shower. She didn't remember getting there. She didn't remember undressing, but she was completely nude and she was in the shower and outside the shower, she could see him like going through her phone and yelling back and forth and like screaming at her and that she could taste blood in her mouth. She said she remembers being on all fours, that she was naked on the ground and that he was kicking her while she was down there. She said that she remembers him kicking her in the ribs until she started convulsing and she begged him to stop because she believed she was going to die from the pain that she was in. And he just kept telling her that nobody could help her. He beat her and choked her until she was unconscious on the bathroom floor. At some point she came to, and she came to to hear him say something pretty vulgar while standing over her. And I'm going to repeat it, even though I don't like it. But he said to her, quote, that's my, and I'm going to take it back now. And then he did some things to her that are again, vulgar, and I don't want to say them, but essentially he was not able to perform. So he got even angrier and continued to beat her further. Then to hurt her and humiliate her further, he took a kitchen knife that had a super dull blade and he sawed through her hair, sawing off her mohawk, which two things. One was incredibly painful. It sounds so painful to me. And I guess it was, it hurt really bad. And he even cut her head. And two, him cutting off her hair was just to hurt her further because her mohawk was like her signature look at that time. That was Christy Mack. So he was trying to take her identity from her. So he took that and he went on to cut up all of her wigs because he always hated her wigs. This man was so enraged that he broke the blade of the knife off and then proceeded to take the dull piece that was still on there and press it into her body and press it into her head to threaten her. And he told her like, I have to kill you. I have to kill you now because I've gone too far. Nobody can see you looking like this or they're going to know that I've gone too far. So I am going to kill you now. And then he left the room. Now, Christy was able to escape and live because when he left the room, she took that opportunity to bolt. He left, he went into the kitchen and she heard him in the kitchen and heard like the metal clanging and she believes he was getting another knife to kill her. Like he was done, he was gonna take her life. So she ran, dude, she went out of her balcony and she just took off running naked down the street to a neighbor's house. She jumped over their fence. She like started banging at their door, begging them to like let her in and let her call the cops. And her neighbors didn't let her in the house, um, which I don't know. I don't know what I would do in that situation. I'd like to think I'd let somebody in, but also you don't know what's going on. So they didn't let her in, but they did let her like hide behind this wall that was on their property. And they called the police for her. So police arrive, they go to her home to arrest John, but by the time they get there, he's gone. He had taken off and he would be on the run for a week before he'd finally be caught. Christy was taken to the hospital where it was discovered that she had 18 broken bones, like, like in her face, dude. She had a broken nose. She had 12 missing and broken teeth, fractured ribs, a bruise to her thigh that was so deep, she couldn't walk for a week and a ruptured liver. The liver injury was so bad, the doctors opted like not to operate on her face because they were worried that she couldn't handle being put under anesthesia. Now what's super wild about this is that Christy's mom, Erin, actually showed up at Christy's home the morning that the cops arrived when all of this happened. I guess she had been at her boyfriend's house and she like rushed over, she got to the house, she got out of her car, she saw the cops everywhere. She like booked it and actually made it part way into the house before she was stopped by a cop. And she just asked them like, 
is my daughter dead? And the cops seemed to be like kind of surprised and was like, like, no, 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 she's at a hospital. Now, why was Erin rushing over to this home? Like, how did she know what was going on? Well, it turns out John had texted Erin about what had happened. And like when she read it, it didn't make sense to her. So she called him and was like, yo, what are you talking about? What's up? And he told her like, I went over there last night things got intense and I hurt Christy. So she drove over there that morning, like she hung up on him. She drove over there that morning, fully convinced that he had killed her daughter. So her mother Erin leaves her house and she rushes over to the hospital. And when she walks in the hospital room, she immediately freaks out and, you know, loses it because Christy is in horrible shape and she looks like she's in horrible shape. And I guess Christy told her like she was awake and was like, don't worry, please don't freak out just calm down. So Erin went over and she held her daughter's hand, but she cried anyway, because her daughter looked like she was going to die. You know what I mean? I'm not going to include any photos because they're incredibly graphic. And I'm sure if you know about this case, you've probably seen them. And like, I don't include photos like that just anyway, but she was in, she had been through hell. You can clearly see that she had been through hell and the physical trauma of what happened to her wouldn't stop there. You know what I mean? She had lasting effects from this attack. The way her muscles healed after the attack made it so that she now needed glasses. Her mouth was also shaped differently from all the veneers that she had to put in. And she said after it all happened, she didn't want to look in the mirror. Like she didn't look in the mirror for weeks. She said of this quote, just feeling my face. I knew it wasn't right. So when I look in the mirror, it's not me. That person wasn't me. It's so hard to go every day without being you anymore. Now back to John. So he's on the run and the whole time he's on the run, he's super active on social media, particularly on Twitter. So he's just sending out stupid tweets talking about how he's such a great guy and he's so misunderstood. One of these tweet, tweets, tweets, one of these tweets read quote, I'm not a bad guy. I went to surprise my girlfriend, help her set up her show and to give her an engagement ring and ended up fighting for my life. And what's really sad about this is that people believed him. They believed he must have been the victim here. How? I don't know. They believed that she must have done something to him or that she was blowing this out of proportion or, and this is disgusting, that she liked it rough like that because of the line of work she was in and now she was just complaining about it after the fact. And Christy saw this stuff, okay? She saw this stuff and decided to take this situation into her own hands and release the photos of what she looked like after the attack on social media and these got blasted everywhere. They went incredibly viral. And she said of this situation, this choice that she made, quote, this is not acceptable. I'm not gonna sit around in my hospital bed and have people say I did something wrong. This is what happened. So I decided to put it out there. Now, War Machine slash John was finally tracked down and he was in a hotel in Simi Valley, which I actually have a friend who lives in Simi Valley. And there's like, I actually have two friends who live out there. There's nothing out there. So I don't really know how they would have ended up finding him out there. But anyways, it doesn't matter. He was arrested and he was charged with like 36 felonies. These felonies included attempted murder, kidnapping, rape and sexual assault charges. And he was extradited back to Nevada and held without bail while he awaited trial. And this trial didn't happen for two years. So he's in jail for two years while he awaits trial. And during this time, he actually did try and take his own life. I guess he tried to hang himself. He like took a piece of linen and like tried to hang himself from his bed and a guard ended up finding him and his body was in like this awkward position. He was discolored and he was unresponsive, but the officer was able to like cut him down and get him breathing again. So he was going to go to trial. And this was a very publicized trial. Like he was known everywhere. His mugshot was distributed all over the place in the U S the UK, Brazil, Australia. No, not Australia, Canada, the U S UK. Canada and Brazil. Everyone had seen this fool's mugshot because it was circulated all over social media, which now that I think about it is probably how the people in Simi Valley saw him and he was found. That makes sense now. Now I did watch footage from this trial and it's incredibly hard to watch at times. Like John specifically is kind of all over the place emotionally. He goes from like indifference to like annoyance to sometimes actually genuinely looking sad. But then when Christy was on the stand and she was describing the several different 
instances of sexual abuse at his hand when she's describing this and she's emotional and she's crying. He like laughs. This fucking monster laughs. And when he laughed, the prosecutor was like, <clears throat> excuse me, judge. Yes, judge. Can we put it on the record that he's fucking laughing right now while she's talking about this? And the judge was like, oh, don't you worry. I saw him. I saw the laugh. It has been noted, my guy, my girl. I can't remember if it was a guy or a girl attorney. It, it really doesn't matter. I literally cannot imagine that. I can't imagine being her. You can see her on the stand and you can see that she is struggling and she's trying to keep her emotions in check, but that they start to like spill out as she's, as she's giving her testimony, which is 100% understandable. Christy's mother, who, you know, we already discussed, she didn't like John. She, well, she finally had her chance to speak when she testifies. And when I tell you, you could tell she was seething. When asked to identify him in the courtroom, she points him out and points out that he's like fiddling with his fingers nonchalantly. And she also points out that he doesn't look now, or at least at trial, not now, that he at trial didn't look the way he did two years prior, noting that he had lost at least 60 pounds of muscle while in jail, probably because he wasn't on the roids anymore. And because he had been pretty open about the fact that he did steroids. I just found her testimony, especially in that instance, to be like, she was clearly like coming for him and you could tell just being like, yeah, like coming for his manhood. You know what I mean? Cause this is a guy who was like alpha male and buff as shit. And now he's off of steroids and he's getting all like small again. I mean, he's still like strong, right? But he's not all ripped. And she's like, yeah, that's the little skinny bitch over there who lost like 60 pounds of muscle and is twiddling his fingers like a little bitch. Like that's the vibes that I got from her. She hated him. Anyways, while she was on the stand, she also talked about how Christy changed while she was in the relationship with War Machine, how she got secretive and distant and how her and her daughter were super close. But while she was with John, she didn't seem to want to spend as much time with her mom. And like, she could tell something was wrong. She said that Christy would just hang out in her room and she wasn't like as talkative as usual. And she even closed down some of her social media accounts. And this was weird because Christy had always been like a super independent person. Even as a child, she was super independent. And with John, she seemed to lose that part of herself. Christy's mom, Erin, told the court that she had only seen one instant, like she had only been around for one instance of John seemingly being physically violent to Christy because Christy did hide it from her mom so much. She said that in this instance, she had been at Christy's because she lived there and that John and Christy were there and she was in her room when she heard them like screaming and fighting outside. And she said this time was different. So she went out and this is where she saw Christy like on the staircase screaming hysterically and clearly losing it where she told her mom like, he grabbed me by the throat and he threw me down the stairs and Christy's mom could see that she had red marks on her neck. And she said at this point, John like left and he went in the room and she like followed him and he went in there and he was packing his stuff. He like had a bag and he was shoving his stuff into the bag, just saying over and over, like, I'm going to kill you. While on the stand, her mom was asked like a pretty intense question. She was asked like, now that you've seen things with hindsight, now that you've seen what a violent person, John is and now you, that you've seen what he did to your daughter. Do you regret not doing something? Do you regret not calling the police back then? Which is honestly like a super fucked up question to ask. And I don't see how it adds to, to this trial. And it kind of annoyed me, but it was her response that really sent me and surprised me. She said, no, she said after seeing what she had seen that she would not have liked to have called the cops. And instead she turned to John and she said, quote, I really wish I would have shot you. That's my retrospective. I wish I would have shot you. After three weeks of trial, the jury was sent to deliberate. And when they returned with their verdict, they had found War Machine guilty of all charges against him, except the attempted murder charge, because for that one, they were deadlocked. So now it was just going to be the sentencing phase. And now Christy and her mother were both going to be able to give their victim impact statements. Christy's statement really showed how much fear she has for this man when she said, quote, I don't know if my life will feel complete in 12 or 30 years and neither do you. But what I do know is when he gets out, he will kill me. The judge said that she had to consider the well-being of the community and avoid possible danger to future potential victims when passing down the sentence. And ultimately, John was given 36 years to life in prison. And this was in 2017. So her, his earliest release date is 2053. Now, since being in prison, War Machine has gone on to get married. He married a woman named Ashley Farrington. I guess the two started writing in 2017. Yeah. And two years later, they went on to, you know, 
he proposed to her with a love poem that he wrote her. And then they went on to get married uh, with a wedding ring that had belonged to her grandmother. And this woman had a son who was present at their wedding. Now I have no idea what she gets out of this considering like from what I read Nevada, in the state of Nevada, they don't have conjugal visits. And so I don't know what she gets out of it. To me, my opinion is that people who are in jail for like violent crimes like that shouldn't be able to get married. But again, that's just me. That's my opinion. That's my feelings on it. Like you should lose that perk when you try to kill someone and you know, rape them. But that again, it's just me. I am curious though. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, he does have an Instagram that I have to assume she runs. I don't know if you get social media in jail. Sometimes it seems like it's from her point of view. Sometimes it seems like it's from his point of view, but you know, it has like his inmate number and like where he's kept. And then it's got lots of photos of them together at jail, in jail, at the jail and like religious texts. And this then just like other texts of rambling words and information. Some of them though, some of these rambling things, some of these posts, honestly, if I'm very real, they seem like they're blaming Christy. This is the vibe I got. There's even a post from literally March of this year that talks about a victim. And it talks about like when you point at somebody and you blame somebody for something, you have all these fingers pointing back at you. The comments on the photos are gross also, by the way, like they're mostly limited to be fair. And I feel like they're likely censored because all of the comments on these photos are good comments to him. And it's like not a private page. And I feel like there are definitely people out there who think he's a fucking asshole. So I have to imagine that they like censor it and delete the bad comments. Cause they just talk about how he looks good and how he should be let out and how he's innocent. And it just blows my mind when I see things like that. Cause I'm like, did you see photos of Christy? This was a 22 year old girl. I feel like this gets lost on people sometimes about how young she was. She was basically a child who was beaten and abused and raped and nearly killed by this grown man who was also a professional fighter. It like blows my mind sometimes. People just love to hate on women, man. People just love to hate on women and they love to hate on women who are sexually empowered. And that just, I, the greater of the evils, man. You know what I mean? Like, come on, it's not even fucking close. It, it makes me nuts. People literally said that Christy did these things to herself and then called the cops on John when he showed up to try to start bandaging her up. Like how dumb are you? I'm sorry. If you think that respectfully, that's dumb as hell. There was also a post on his Instagram that uses a Bible verse to explain domestic violence. But really what it kind of says is that because the woman wasn't good enough, her man lost interest. And though he commits the quote greater sin, the woman had really sinned because she put herself in that position by failing to submit to Christ, which truly makes me want to vomit. I'm sorry, but it does. Now I feel like I kind of sound like I'm shitting on his new wife. And just for the record, I did go to her personal Instagram and kind of perused a little bit. And I got to be honest, based on some of her beliefs and some of her thoughts, I don't really think even if she hadn't married a violent man that we'd get along super well anyway. And that's all I'm going to say about her. But anyways, that's where the case stands. Christy has moved on and I hope she has found as much healing and happiness that she possibly can in the life that she has. And as far as John, he is in jail for the foreseeable future. For the record, he has come out and he has apologized to Christy and he has said that he is remorseful. He said specifically, quote, there's not a day that goes by that I don't regret that. And I hate it. Nobody hates me as much as I hate the man that I used to be from the bottom of my heart. I apologize to Christy. I'm sorry, Christy. Now let's just hope that's true in case he is ever released. And that my friends is the story of the attempted murder of Christy Mack at the hands of her ex-boyfriend war machine. And now that I've given you all the information, I want to revisit the question of the day. And that is this, do you believe that John's sentence was appropriate and is justice for the crimes he committed? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. With that said, I hope this video was informative and it made sense. And of course, I just want to thank you for remembering Christy with me today. Before you leave, please don't forget to let me know down below what cases you'd like to see me cover in the future. As you know, I have a long list of cases and whenever you leave me a suggestion, I put your name on the list with the case so that if I cover it, I can give you a shout out because I know you're filled with good ideas and good taste. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. If you haven't already, please don't forget to join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing that bell. I put out a new video every single week and I would love to hang out with you. Yes, you specifically you. And if you want to hang out more consistently, all my social media is listed down below along with a link to my membership so you can get early access to non-sponsored videos, uh, priority comment responses, things like that. And now with all of that said, I just want to thank you for being here when you could literally be anywhere else in the world. That is tight. 
you are tight. Please stay safe and be a better person than you were yesterday. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.